Okay, the weakest part of their argument is whether all this is dangerous. Um, you know, the sea level rise is, you know, creeping up. You know, the, the ice cap, Greenland, Antarctic, you know, it changes from year to year with a little bit of melting. But there's no cat catastrophe looming on those fronts. And so they've turned to extreme weather. Oh, global mm -hmm. warming is calling, and I have to say the hurricane and global warming first put this idea <laughs> into their head. Ah, you know, if we can show that even one degree can cause something bad like more category five hurricanes, then we have something. So, so this started this whole trend of every extreme weather event is associated with um, human-caused global warming, which just isn't right, true. Right. And, and if you look back, and, and they tend to go back to 1970 or 1950. Oh, this is the warmest year, the worst storm, or the biggest drought, or whatever, since 1970, maybe since 1950. But if you look in, um, to the first half of the 20th century, the weather was way worse, certainly in North America and over um, much of the globe also. Um, right now, in the U.S. West, um, we're being assaulted by these atmospheric river events, bringing huge amounts of rain and snow, which is going to cause flooding. It's still snow yet. And, you know, this is horrible, global warming and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you go back to the winter of 1861 and 1862, 15 inches of rain fell wow. in central um, California over a period of a couple of months, which huge floods over a very widespread area that lasted for absolute months, okay? And paleoclimate evidence showed that these tend to happen about every 200 years or so, where you have this massive accumulation of these atmospheric rivers. So this is nothing at all unusual. Mm -hmm. So if you look back into the historical record, or better yet, the paleoclimate record, invariably you will find worse weather events. So, tr so, right, so that's part of the time frame problem, right? Is like, well, over what span do you evaluate these events before you draw your conclusions? But, so, but you can't. So, do you believe in? Do you believe that any of the tipping point hypotheses? Franzen told me something interesting. He, you know, this was a, kind of a technical proposition. He said that in complex systems with many degrees of freedom on the entropy front, so many ways they can potentially react, the probability of a tipping point positive feedback loop. You know, like the that runaway global warming or something like that, the melting of the Greenland ice, ice caps because we hit a tipping point, said in complex systems that have multiple potential outcomes, that kind of all or none tipping point is unlikely. You get that more, more likely in a simple system that's characterized by the probability of radical state change, like water freezing, for example. And so I thought that, I, I can't evaluate that argument, you know, it's outside um, of my domain of sci scientific competence, but it struck me as an interesting idea. Well, uh, to, to some extent, it's true. There is one sort of tipping point that we could encounter. And if this does happen, I would expect that human-caused global warming would play only a small part. And this is the West Antarctic ice sheet, which is an unstable ice sheet. So if you took the ice sheet away, the continent would actually be underwater. But what it is, you have this huge ice sheet that sits on the continent and part of it's above water, okay? And, and it has an overhang. And, mm -hmm, because, mm -hmm. and this is just a dynamically unstable situation and it moves fairly fast. Underneath this ice sheet are lots of inactive volcanoes, even the occasional active volcano. So if these volcanoes became active and we had you know, a greater heat source under this combined with sea level rise and a little bit of um, global warming, this could accelerate. And on the time scale of you know, three or four centuries, we could see this collapse, you know, which could lead to a substantial sea level rise. So, so that's the one kind of, you know, if we saw that happening, are there engineering ways of dealing with it? I don't know, but it was something that would be a slow process, but that's the only one of the so-called tipping points 
that I see could happen because, you know, the, if, if there's going to be some solid earth, you know, if the earth wa- wants to have an earthquake or a big volcanic eruption, you know, there aren't a lot of, <laughs> you know, negative feedbacks in the earth system to prevent that. So to right, me, right, right. That, that's the one, like, bad thing that could happen, but it would take centuries. Um, but the other ones, yeah, I don't see it.